welcome back to Common Sense, everyone. If it wasn't clear before, it certainly is now. Joe Biden's handlers hate America. Just this week, they had him announce another round of aid for Ukraine, $800 million worth of it to be exact. And when asked by a reporter how long the United States could keep up supporting Ukraine at this level, here's what he said. How long can the U.S. maintain the level and pace of this military support for Ukraine? I, well, we have the capacity to do this for a, a long time. Hmm, that's interesting. Because if I didn't know any better, I would assume since Biden is so keen on protecting Ukraine's border, our border, meaning the border of the country Joe Biden is supposed to be presiding over, is completely under control and we just have so many resources to spare. But no, not even close to the case. In fact, Border Patrol was so overrun with migrants this past weekend that they released over 500 in one day in West Texas. It was such a desperate move, even former acting CBP Commissioner Mark Morgan was shocked. He told Breitbart, quote, Never before have we seen the mass release of single adults. The American people need to wake up. Do you think we are getting a complete criminal history from their countries of origin? The answer is no. Pretty scary stuff. And joining me now to weigh in on this atrocity is the president of the Texas Nationalist Movement, Daniel Miller. Daniel, thank you so much for being here. Hey, thanks for having me, Anna. So, you know, this is unreal. I mean, another round of aid for Ukraine, another round of unvetted illegals for Americans, essentially. Uh, there's no way this is anything other than intentional at this point, is, you know, on my take and probably a lot of other Americans. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, here in Texas, it's a double slap for us. Uh, you know, as, as Texans overpay anywhere from 103 to $160 billion annually into the federal system, uh, they're watching uh, billions and billions of dollars being funneled over uh, to aid the Ukrainian effort to defend their territorial integrity and to defend their sovereignty. And Texans are having to come out of our own pocket, uh, you know, for $3 billion additional dollars into our budget to try and do our dead level best to handle border security here. So uh, it, it's a double slap for those of us here in Texas that just want to see our border secure. Yeah, and Mark Morgan brought up a really good point in that quote. He said, do you really think these people are you know, vetted properly? I mean, obviously they're not. We saw what happened after we brought in all those Afghanistan uh, refugees. They, they're already you know, raping people and wherever they're being released in. Uh, it's a complete cultural difference for them. But they're also coming through our southern border. There's people from all over the world who are getting through. And you know, they're, they're not being vetted. That's frightening specifically for Texans because they're the ones who get the first you know, uh, interaction with these people. Absolutely. I mean, look, by any measure, what we are experiencing on the southern border is an invasion. Uh, you know, when they had 10,000 Russian troops built up on the other side of the Ukraine, they said Russia was uh, gearing up for an invasion. But yet every single solitary month here in, in, uh, in Texas, we're seeing 165,000 uh, illegal immigrants come across the border, and it's putting a, an untenable uh strain on our infrastructure. And, and again, context, 165,000 is roughly the same number of troops, allied troops that landed on the beaches of Normandy and D-Day. That was the largest amphibious invasion in modern history. And, and here we are experiencing that every single solitary month right here in Texas. Right. I was going to say, you know, it's who gets the short end of the stick here. Of course, it's the you know border states, Texas in particular. This has to be fueling the nationalist movement there. I mean, there's got to be more people than ever, I would think, calling for you know, Texit, basically. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, over this border crisis, uh, a good example, we saw Chip Roy stand on the floor of the United States Congress and, and ask why in the world Texas joined the union in 1845 anyway, if the federal government will not meet its minimal responsibilities uh, and continues to steal money from the taxpayers of Texas, then why, why did we even join and why are we even here? Um, you know, it's, it's one of the reasons that we're able to go to Texans and ask the question, uh, if Texas was already a self-governing independent nation, knowing everything you know about the federal government today, would you vote to join? Yeah, and Texas is a great example of exactly why the founders feared having a strong federal government, having this strong national government, I should say, uh, rather than having the Articles of, of Confederation, because, of course, that was the first draft for our Constitution. Um, they didn't want to have the, like, a, they didn't even want an executive branch at first. And this is exactly why, because the states have so many different needs. Um, it's, it's so different. At the time, we didn't even have Texas as a state, obviously. But this is the perfect example of why, because 
of course, in D.C., we, we talked about last time, you know, we had a conversation about this. We were sending migrants to D.C. Uh, per Abbott's suggestion, which you uh, suggested 10 years, 12, 12 years ago. Um, so it's just interesting because we're seeing play out the very fears of our founders today. Well, absolutely. You know, one of the reasons, one of the big challenges that Texas had with Mexico to begin with, other than the usurpation of the Constitution, uh, was the fact that they failed to protect um, the the frontier areas of Texas that was being settled, as was agreed. You know, but we've got a federal government right now that it, instead of doing its dead level best to do its very minimal, which is to guarantee every state a constitutional Republican form of government, and to, uh, at a minimum, protect our border and to defend the states from invasion, uh, what we've got is the federal government siphoning money out of Texas taxpayers' pockets, redistributing it to places like Ukraine or California for you know, Pakistani gender studies or whatever kind of ridiculous programs they want. And here in Texas, we have real physical, economic, public health, public safety impacts from the fact that they have absolutely been derelict in their duties at the border. And so Texas is going to have to do something, uh, whether it is have Greg Abbott declared an invasion and deploy the full strength of the Texas military department down there, uh, or whether or not, whether Texas needs to, to actually go ahead and withdraw. Uh, obviously, we are advocating for all of the, the, uh, the pros for Texas standing as a self-governing independent nation, and chief among them is the ability to protect our own border and set our own immigration policy. Right, and that seems to be the only answer at this point. I mean, it, and it's, it begs the question, why is Joe Biden, you know, doing this? Why is he giving so much money to Ukraine? This can't be something that the American people agreed upon. I mean, I think there were a lot of people who at first were like, okay, sort of, we're for Ukraine, we're for helping them. But what exactly does that mean? It seems like they sucked us into spending more and more money on Ukraine without really disclosing what their final plan was. I mean, Joe Biden even said to that reporter, we'll keep doing this for basically as long as we want because we can. Um, it, it just feels like he there's a vested interest in him doing that personally for himself, um, and he's not as concerned about or doesn't care really if, if Texas, you know, turns into basically a, another third world country. Yeah, I mean, well, look, let's let's be honest. Uh, I think it would be, I think we'd be hard pressed to make the case that Joe Biden is making actually any decisions in the White House right now. Right. I mean, when he when he can confuse Title 42 and COVID, uh, when he's trying to shake hands with uh, imaginary people at his rallies, <laughs> Uh, I mean, you know, I, I think I think that we're dealing with a, a, a president that is effectively a figurehead uh, for a whole lot of people that are currently in the federal government that are actually calling the shots. And and what we know is, is that the White House and the civil service in Washington, D.C. are replete with globalists who detest the concept of a nation state and therefore hate the idea of borders. They want a borderless world. And so while they are, uh, you know, moving their chess pieces in Ukraine and taking our tax money, uh, while we still have veterans that are homeless living in homeless shelters and under bridges, and we have a border that has effectively collapsed under the control of international criminal narco-terrorist gangs, uh, they are uh, uh, effectively carrying out their plan, uh, which is to see the end of the borders here in the United States, and particularly here in Texas. Yeah, and isn't it interesting? I mean, you don't need any more proof than how the media has been handling this. They have no problem showing us, you know, footage of, of kids, of families being hurt in Ukraine at the hands of Russia, you know, making Russia out to be this monster. And yet what they don't show you are the homeless veterans, the people who are, you know, dying because of fentanyl overdoses, because of the, the people we have pouring in through our border, the traffickers we have pouring in. They don't tell us about the kids who are raped by these, you know, these traffickers, these human traffickers. It's, it's like they, they don't want to show us the atrocities here at home, but they have no problem showing us the atrocities abroad. I mean, it, it, you don't need any more proof than that to, to see that what, what's happening is clearly intentional. They don't want us to see the truth. Oh, absolutely. Look, I mean, here, here's the bottom line. You have an international humanitarian crisis. Um, you know, you, you've got more media there than Carter's got liver pills. Uh, but when, when it comes to the issues that are dealing with on the border, you, you can't find uh, mainstream media down there with a hunting dog and a Ouija board. I mean, that's just the bottom line. They, they don't care because what they have turned into is propagandists masquerading as journalists. There is a legitimate invasion and a crisis, a public safety crisis, a public health crisis, and a national security crisis on our border. And it has been up to, uh, to, to folks like you, 
and, and a very limited number of news outlets and, frankly, more citizen journalists than you can imagine to get the story out, to let people know that we are being overrun. Yeah, I mean, that seems to be the only answer here. We have Ben Burkwam covering that here at Real America's Voice, but not a whole lot in the mainstream media, of course. And anyway, thank you so much, Daniel. I really appreciate you being here. Hey, Anna, thank you so much. Yeah, you know, it's very few people are actually at the border covering this, and that's why it's so important uh, that we shed light on the people who are covering it. Of course, like I mentioned, uh, Ben Burkwam covers it very regularly. You can find all of his content on his Twitter. Also, he has his show, Law and Border, fantastic show. Uh, he really sheds light on the issue. He, he interviews a lot of the CBP uh, agents down there, and they say basically, you know, the same thing that Daniel was just saying, like, these are things that the mainstream media, the president, of course, is ignoring. And it's just, it's so fascinating to me that he has no problem giving uh, billions of dollars to Ukraine at this point, because we've already given rounds of it already, of aid to them. And, you know, it's, it seems like every time they, they want to pull it over our heartstrings, people are like, okay, yeah, I sort of feel bad, but they're a little bit skeptical. And then they sort of guilt you into supporting it completely. And then what they don't tell you is that they're going to keep doing it, and they're going to keep doing it. They're going to keep sending money to Ukraine. It's the same thing they do with everything. They did it with COVID. They said, oh, you're a grandma killer if you don't wear a mask. And then some Americans actually bought into it. They started wearing their mask. And then they said, what about two masks, now three masks? You cannot give these people an inch because they will take many, many miles, not just one. And that's the problem with this is you can't trust the government. You can't trust the big government-loving left. They're going to take it, and they're going to run with it. If they tell you something, you better research it because, you know, Actually, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's not true. So, you know, or, or there's no, no morsel of truth to it. And that's what's so scary. You know, we can't trust these people at all. And it shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't have to be that way. But basically, we're just as bad as Russia, if not worse. Anyways.